السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان اینڈ لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور آئی واز ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا گائڈنگ پرنسپلس آف پوزیشننگ ان دا پریویس لیکچر اینڈ آئی آلسو میڈ اٹ کلیئر دیٹ دیز آر دا پرنسپلس وچ اپلائی ٹو کریٹنگ یور پوزیشننگ مینٹیننگ یور پوزیشننگ اور چینجنگ یور پوزیشننگ وین از دا ٹائم دیٹ یو شوڈ چینج یور پوزیشن also has been one of the topics of uh, learning in the previous lecture. Getting back to the guiding principles, let me remind you that I talked about three principles in the previous lecture and I was in the process of the fourth one when the time ran out. So I'm going to pick up from where I left. Just to give you a recap, the first principle is that you should change your position only when you feel it is necessary. And that feeling is not whimsical. That feeling is based on a certain criteria with which you consider before deciding whether you should go for a changed positioning or not. And that criteria may lead, lead you to deciding that you're going to maintain the position. The second guiding principle is let positioning guide all the strategies, meaning all the operational strategies which are going to be translated into executions of different kinds across uh, functional boundaries. The third principle that I talked about was let the top management lead the charge when it comes to positioning, the maintaining positioning or shifting positioning. It is the top management which must lead the charge. The fourth guiding principle is that it is the employees of the company who bring positioning to life. What is meant by that? I talked about that in detail in the previous lecture before getting to the acronym audience which really helps you to maximize positioning of your brand within the company. And what is that? I discussed the first letter A, the second one U, and the third one D. But the time ran out. So let us now start talking about the same acronym from the next letter, which is I. I stands for inspiration. You have done a lot of work to develop the brand picture, the brand contract. And during the process, you carried out a lot of research in a formal way and also in informal way, meaning that you compiled a lot of data, analyzed information, and on the basis of that, you arrived at a certain rationale, which would lead you toward determining the positioning of the brand. Now, that's the kind of work which must be shared with your colleagues. I mean, they must know that you have carried out that amount of work and that quality of work, and you have a certain rationale that you are talking about uh, to have the positioning which you think is the right positioning. So these people must appreciate that work, and they will appreciate that work if they really are convinced about the quality and the hard work that has gone into it, and that must prove to be the source of inspiration for those people. So in other words, they are aware of for the positioning, they have a very good understanding and they have a sense of direction and given all those things, uh, they also they should feel very much inspired to start working for the goals and objectives that you have set for the brand and for the company. Now, having talked about that, let us now uh, discuss the next letter of the acronym audience and that is E. E stands for engagement. How do you engage people? They have a sense of direction, they're inspired and uh, having those two uh, ingredients uh, of good work and of good behavior, there's every chance that people will feel engaged and work for the positioning of the brand. And never forget the fact that positioning is the mother of all the strategies that you are going to have at work. So people have got to be engaged because they belong to different departments and all those departments are going to work alongside you in order to get the results. The next letter of acronym audience is N, which stands for naturalness. How do you get this naturalness? And what is the essence of this naturalness? Let us try to understand that. Well, if the right people are in place, then they will find it very natural 
to work on the objectives that have been set for the company and that have been set for the brand. How do you make sure that you have the right people in place all over the company is not something which falls into the domain of brand management only. What really falls into your domain is the people who work for you or people who report to you. You've got to make sure that they're the right people, they understand objectives, and they know the strategies, they understand what part of execution they are supposed to be working on. And once they start working on that, they must work very diligently. Now, people all over the company, meaning across uh, departmental boundaries or functional boundaries, um, it is the responsibility of different levels of management, starting from yours right up to the chief executive. Everyone in his or her place has got to make sure that the people they hire are the right people. Oh, there are so many criteria of going for the right people, which uh, is uh, what you call human resource management and is outside the scope of this course. But my point is, if the company has the right people you know, all over the place, they will find it very natural uh, to work on what has been set for them as vital tasks. Uh, the next letter of the acronym audience is C, and uh, the C stands for criteria. What this means here is that you've got to have a criteria for rewards, rewards for good performance. You identify people with good performance on the basis of certain mechanism, and that mechanism is what you may call the management by objectives. You already have given your people objectives, and on the basis of those objectives, you can measure the performance and see what is it that is achieved and what is it that is not achieved. And you will recall discussion on this topic earlier. What is not achieved really calls for your attention. Uh, meaning, is it because people are not really competent? Or is it because the objectives are not really realistic? Or is it because there were, there were, there were certain strategic complications? Or is it because the competition gave the company so much hard time that people were not really in a position to uh, achieve their objectives? especially when it comes to the marketing objectives. Performance is something which has to be rewarded, meaning good performance. And we're not assuming here that there is going to be a negative performance. All I'm talking about is, if there is negative performance, you've got to look into the relevant areas with which may give rise to that kind of uh, negative performance. But people who perform well, they've got to be rewarded. And if that becomes culture of the company, or oh, there's no way that people are not going to work for the positioning that you have carved out for the brand. The next letter of the acronym audience is E. That's the last letter. E stands for education. You've got to educate people all over the company about the positioning concept. And I think it goes without saying, they will feel educated if they really are exposed and if they really are conscious of all the other letters of the concept audience. Meaning, if they are aware of the concept of positioning and they really can clearly state that, if they have a good understanding of the concept uh, of positioning, if they have a desire for the two to work for objectives and they have the right sense of direction, they feel very much inspired, then they are educated. They have to be educated to the point that they really become good brand ambassadors. And if they are good brand ambassadors, there is no way that they are not going to work for the objectives that have been set for the company and for the brand. So this concept of audience is the key toward maximizing positioning for your brand within the company. So this is the internal and interactive marketing which is going to bring the positioning of the brand to life. And that is what is meant by this guiding principle number four that we have just discussed. From there, we now make transition to guiding principle number five, which is Strong brand positioning is customer-driven. 
we have learned so many different concepts within the area of brand management, which are all customer driven. Well, this principle, by the same token, has got to be very customer driven because this is the principle that relates with creating and crafting your positioning for the brand and then maintaining that. And then this is the same principle which is going to lead you into the area of repositioning the brand somewhere like you know, two to three years or five years down the line. What is it? Well, this basically takes us back into the area of brand picture. While developing brand picture, you carried out a lot of research and through that, you, you, you found out the strengths and weaknesses of your competitors' brands and you related those with your own. So in other words, you have a very clear picture of the strengths and weaknesses of your brand vis-a-vis -vis competition. This is the information which is going to lead you or which is going to help you uh, toward determining the positioning for your brand. You have now reached the most critical phase or the most critical point where you are now required to carve out the real positioning for the brand. I'm going to say something here which must not confuse you and that is for the time being only for the time being just forget about the positioning statement which I made in the previous lecture or maybe in the lecture before that the positioning statement about brand XYZ which you made at that time was made in order for you to understand the concept with relative ease now, having forgotten that there ever was a positioning statement and having talked about the guiding principles which help us toward determining the real, actual positioning of the brand, we now stand at a juncture and we should stand pretty comfortably at this juncture where we are going to define that statement. So the statement relating to the brand XYZ which you saw and which I talked about so much was made in a way after taking into account all the guiding principles which we are learning and we are just about at the end of learning those principles. So the juncture is that we are going to decide what should be the positioning statement or what should be the actual positioning. And actual positioning is again not going to be something whimsical but based on sheer understanding of these principles. These principles must take you into another area which governs the criteria once again for deciding what should be the actual brand position. Getting back to the basic um, determinants of um, the consumers the buying action in relation to brand XYZ of sandwiches. I talked about three factors because the company or the brand manager for that matter that is very clear about um, selling those sandwiches at an affordable price. The brand manager is also very clear about uh, the high quality of the product because he wants to compete with international chains selling uh, sandwiches uh, all over the world. So this goes without saying that the brand manager seems to be the very conscious and very clear about the target market he wants to attack. The brand manager also seems to be very clear about the factor of uh, accessibility which is the one of the important three determinants of the consumer buying action because he thinks that consumer is going to go and buy his brand of sandwiches because the three determinants that he's playing with or that he's planning are very meaningful. Meaningful in the sense that there are so many different benefits with which flow out of these determinants. So now the next question which must flash into your mind or into the mind of the brand manager is how is he going to decide the actual positioning for the brand XYZ? Meaning what are the dimensions or what are the different angles from which he can view 
uh, his sandwiches in order to choose the most appropriate positioning. Let us uh, discuss those. One angle could be related to the quality. The brand manager might think that he must start talking about quality. And that is where, you know, he should position his brand. Now, this has a lot of implications. If the brand manager is sure that he's going to maintain a very high quality, not only high quality, but also, the, you know, some differential in terms of uh, the quality parameters for times to come, well, he should think in terms of uh, positioning the brand in terms of quality. But at the same moment, a question might come into his mind or her mind that quality is something which is being maintained by their competitors because they sell good quality and they are companies of international reputation and the chances are they will further improve the quality and their quality will not deteriorate. So is this positioning going to, going to be very meaningful? So that is a question which must be answered or else he could look at the positioning from the price point of view. Now if he may think that price is the factor or should be the basis of his positioning, then it has to be something which has a magical touch to it. And that magical touch could be if he's going to sell his sandwiches at what they call an everyday low price. The question is, is he going to maintain low price for all times to come? or he's using the low price tactic or low price strategy just because he wants to have a step in the door, meaning a step in the door of the target market. He may be thinking, once I get this step, the next step is going to be an increase in price. Because if I'm going to sell quality which is comparable with that of the competition, then why should I suffer on the price account for all times to come? So there has to be a time when I bring my price either in parity with the competition or maybe on certain entries, I may increase the price. Now that is going to be a pricing strategy uh, which is going to be discussed you know, when he reaches that particular point. So in other words, he's going to cross the bridge, the pricing bridge in terms of, you know, taking the price so much high that uh, he surpasses um, uh, the competition. Uh, so he will cross the bridge at that particular point in time. But now the point is, should he be talking about the price? Maybe the answer is he should not. Or if you know, he's going to talk about uh, the price premium, what is it that is going to justify that price premium? Well, I would say even for that point of view, talking about the price may not be the right positioning. If he's going to charge a premium price, which does not seem to be the case, then he rather should talk about very high quality. Because he has to talk about something very distinct and something very precise. Once that factor of positioning makes home into the minds of the poor folks who have an oversimplified mind, then the other factors of quality, the other factors relating accessibility and pricing and packaging and appearance and looks will all fall in place. You need to have just one positioning point which is going to push the button for the final action meaning buying on part of the consumer. So that factor we have talked about from two different angles. One could be quality, the other could be price. The decision, the decision is going to be yours. I hope things are clear while talking about um, the quality factor or the price factor. The important thing is 
whatever you talk about has got to be sustainable over a long period of time. If price is something which is not going to be sustainable, meaning you may start talking about price in different terms, but once you have gone for the price increase and a meaningful price increase, then positioning in relation to pricing should go out the window. If you're talking about quality and you're very confident that quality is going to be maintained, then you better start talking about quality or those features of quality which are going to have an appeal for the customers in differentiated terms. Because just saying we are offering a quality which is the best in the world, it may not work. There has to be a catchy expression of the quality feature which really makes home into the minds of the customers. That is the point which I want to make. Another angle from which you can view uh, the positioning of the brand is accessibility. Now the question which should uh, come into the mind of the brand manager is, am I going to talk about accessibility all the time, meaning for the next two to three years? If the answer is yes, then maybe this is going to be a meaningful positioning. But then you also have to look at it from uh, the point of uh, acceptance on part of the customer. Are they going to accept that? If you think that talking about accessibility is going to amount to talking about revolutionizing the service, then maybe it is the right positioning. After two years, or maybe before that, when you think of shifting your position, because now you have started putting up restaurants all over the place, you have to think to yourself, is positioning relating to accessibility going to work at that time also? And if you think, that yes, it could help, then you might as well go for this positioning. And if you think there is going to be a shift in the position at that time, then you will recall the fact I talked about. Does this positioning allow you to stage a shift and still maintain a consistency of uh, the brand character and the brand identity? If the answer is yes, it is going to make the transition uh, not very difficult and we can maintain consistencies, then I think you're talking about a positioning which is okay. You can also approach the brand from taste profile standpoint. You might think to yourself that uh, the product you're going to sell is going to have such a taste. It is going to be so mouth-watering. It is not a bad idea talking about the taste profile because this taste is very, very different from what people are accustomed to. And during the uh, trials, meaning during the test runs, because we uh, did have a panel of uh, the target customers who really were full of praise for the taste profile. And if that is the case, you may like to position your brand from that standpoint which may not be a bad positioning. Again, some questions that you have to ask yourself is, um, is it going to be sustainable? Whether is it going to be uh, competitive? Uh, is it going to relate to so many different aspects of uh, uh, the brand management? If the answer is yes, this could be the one of the, uh, the angles or one of the uh, positioning strategies, so to say. Like I said, positioning is very strategic. So anything that you are considering uh, or studying in relation to deciding what should be the actual positioning, it is very, very strategic. All right. Another angle at which uh, you uh, can, uh, I mean, a strategic angle at which you can use uh, to uh, the view brand positioning is the appearance. Is it that uh, the product looks so beautiful and looks so tempting and mouth watering that you should talk about appearance. If that makes sense, okay, you can position the brand that way. And li like I uh, said earlier, 
But you can also get a look at the brand positioning from the standpoint of uh, the service. The service is so effective and efficient that it is going to revolutionize the concept. You know that there are people who deliver uh, lunch at uh, the lunch time. So what is it that is going to be new about our service? What is it that is going to revolutionize it? Now, you're dealing with something which is uh, selling a product in a very tangible form. It is a food item, it's a sandwich, which somebody's going to eat. So it's a tangible product. At the same time, you are delivering that product with the help of a service. So at the same time that you're talking about the service marketing also, it's a combination of product marketing and service marketing. So when you say that you're going to revolutionize, you might look at the product dimension. Others also are doing it, but the product that we're going to sell is so mouth-watering, is so much good in terms of its appearance aspect that along with the people who are going to deliver it, the service is going to be revolutionized. And the people are the delivery people. When you are looking at the aspect of service, you've got to look at so many different uh, related factors. Like you know, whenever they go, they have to have a smile on the face. And for that, you've got to train them. They've got to have a nice outfit, which really uh, characterizes the, the brand personality. The uniforms they wear they must be very neat and crisp, and they have to have colors which are in consonance and which are in total conformity with the brand personality and the brand's character. So if you think that you can maintain all these factors, which you should, why not? And you can make all those things, meaning all the aspects of the uh, product marketing and all the aspects of service marketing into a cohesive whole, and you can control that and you can manage that all the time, then maybe this is a good positioning for the brand. Or yet another angle which you can consider from the positioning point of view is the variety. You're not going to start with just the one sandwich. You're going to start with maybe two or three. I don't know, but maybe you decide for six or seven. If you think that you're going to have a large variety appealing to different taste buds, so to say, within the same target market, maybe you try to position your brand from the variety standpoint, if it makes sense. If it makes sense, okay, go for it. So these are uh, a few of the factors with which I've tried to relate with the, with the hypothetical situation, meaning hypothetical brand about which I keep talking so frequently only in order to ease up your uh, understanding and comprehension. So okay, once you have answered all these questions or once okay, you have had this criteria in place, okay, you are all set to go for the positioning statement. But hold on. It is still not the time to make the statement. Before you do that, you still have a few more factors to consider and to evaluate different statements which you have come up with. And I hasten to add that whichever positioning you may like to choose, it has to be checked once again against another set of criteria. And why is that? Because that gives you a very good cross-check. Let us talk about those factors. We are quite clear about uh, all the factors that we have discussed, and you are in a position to come up with uh, maybe two, three, four 
or you know, half a dozen statements, uh, strategic statements uh, as to what should be the positioning and now that you are taxing your mind as to which one is the best one. And you want to pick that up. It is not just going to be a question of take your pick. No, it is a question of that you have to cross check that against another set of criteria. But what is that? Now you have chosen one of the statements because it really appeals to you. What you really have to look into at this moment is, it again has to be very customer driven or it is something which it has to be something which is immediately owned by the customers. So this set of criteria which is going to provide you with a cross check basically is something which is going to enable you to look at the statement or the set of statements that you have come up with from the customer's point of view. So what is that criteria? And uh, That is, are the products looks and appearance compatible with the positioning? I mean, that could be the first question that you must ask yourself. If you are talking about quality, meaning if you're talking about positioning the brand from quality point of view, are the looks and appearance compatible with that? The answer generally should be yes. The next question from customer's point of view should be, how strong is the customer motivation behind this positioning? Again, to give you an example, if the positioning is from the quality point of view and uh, you are talking about price and which is a low price, maybe it is not going to motivate your target market. They are very quality conscious people, not only really quality conscious, I mean they are the target market which is not very conscious about the price level. And if you are talking about pricing all the time, hammering that in to his or her mind, maybe they're going to be um, kind of uh, disgruntled and they're going to feel kind of put off. They are wanting quality and you are talking pricing. So there's got to be a compatibility uh, between, uh, uh, there's got to be um, a strong, the motivating force uh, on part of the, the customer to accept that positioning. Another question which you must consider is, uh, what size of the market uh, is going to be involved in such positioning? Again, if you look at it, uh, the quality versus price, I mean that is the right way of uh, the putting it, quality versus price. What is going to be the size of the market which is going to be influenced by the uh, price positioning and what is going to be the size of the market that is going to be influenced by the quality positioning and then make your decision. Another question that you should ask yourself is, does this positioning really capitalize on uh, uh, competitors' weaknesses? Meaning, are you talking about something which competitors lack? If it is very uh, strong, meaning if the aspect is very strong, then you should go for that positioning. The cross check is positive. And if you think that uh, this positioning, which is for example uh, quality, good quality, no question about that. But if you think competition is also offering a very good quality and the differential is not all that strong, it is there, but it is not all that strong, then maybe this cross check is not going to be uh, very highly positive. But if you think um, that your quality in terms of taste profile and in terms of ingredients is so good, is so top class that along with appearance which also is great, terrific uh, and, and, and you should talk about quality, then the check I would say is positive and you may as well go for quality positioning because the ones that you have succeeded in generating trial because the positioning is good, then that will do the trick. But once customers have tried the product, they will know all the positive aspects relating to the product. And that's the trick which you must leave to the positioning. And how you do that, 
I will sum that up in one sentence later. Another um, cross-check or uh, a part of the criteria that I'm talking about is, is this positioning sustainable? And that is something I've been talking about so frequently in relation to so many different things. But here, you know, we are trying to learn how we are going to make sure that the positioning statement or the positioning strategy that we are going to choose or have chosen is going to be sustainable. Whatever is the positioning, price, quality, accessibility, appearance, service, whatever it is, if you really are convinced that it is going to be sustainable for a long time to come, then I think it's, it's a good cross-check and it's not a bad positioning. You should go for that. Another um, the part of this criteria is um, the financial resource. You've got to with the check. Are you going to have uh, the required financial resources to support this positioning? You may talk of uh, the positioning which requires uh, a lot of money. Um, if you are wanting to position the brand uh, with a buyer quality, are you going to have enough resources to go for a campaign with which you think that there should be a compatible campaign in terms of um, not only its features, but also in terms of the intensity it requires to remind customers again and again that we exist in the market. So that is one example of the financial resource. Let us talk about another question which is very important uh, to be answered before you can complete your evaluation or the process of you know, these uh, cross-checks. And that is, does this positioning allow us with an alternative platform if this positioning failed? Let me explain this with the help of this same old uh, XYZ example, uh, XYZ brand. You chose positioning for the brand on the basis of your service because you really were convinced that it is such a beautiful service and it is such a creative concept and the, the product which we are going to deliver is so good that the combination of these two is something that is our prowess, that is our strength and we should try to capitalize on that and that should be the basis of your positioning. It hasn't worked. What do you do? Because practical problems are there. The people are not reaching their destination on time. And the customers are complaining. You are earning a bad name in the market. The reputation of the brand may be tarnished. And if that happens, you know the, the end result. The sales will plummet. So you think in order to reverse what has happened so far, we've got to change the positioning of the brand. Whatever um, image that they have um, built up in the mind so far, we still have time to change that. We still have time to fix the situation. It will take a little bit of effort, but the opportunity is there. So you decide to shift to quality in terms of positioning the brand or features in terms of positioning the brand because you know that you offer very good quality and you know that your product really has you know, good features. Now this is the case with so many different brands. The only thing to remember is that your brand has to offer a package of benefits and that's what good brands do. If you are introducing a brand and you are positioning it with the brand having just you know, the one or two benefits and you want to change the position from this one to another one, maybe you have difficulties. So the attributes and the benefits which the brand offers have to be so many or at least a handful meaningful differentiated benefits on which you can rest in case your original positioning failed. So in this case, you know, getting back to the brand XYZ, you still think to yourself that the quality features are so inviting that I was talking about you know, positioning the brand on a quality basis, but then you see that my boss or the marketing manager somehow did not listen to me. 
I mean, this could be the kind of debate, or this could be the kind of uh, arguments that might be overheard within the department. But the positive side of all this is that you still have a you know, few more features on which you can reposition your brand. So this becomes a very, very question. Uh, is, does this positioning allow us with an alternative in case a shift has to be made? So it basically is not the positioning. It basically is the product features. It basically is the inner substance of the brand which you are dealing with. And the fact of the matter is that positioning also deals with that. So do not be confused that when I say um, shifting positioning on the basis of a few more features, added features that you did not talk about earlier and you have decided to talk about those now because you will recall I pointed out this thing. Your brand has a lot of benefits to offer but you do not talk about all those in the same breath. When you do that you're not making the mark. You're not being very convincing because the human mind or that oversimplified mind that we are talking about has a certain level of comprehension. And beyond that, it does not store anything and everything. It rejects. And it is because of that that you have to keep your message simplified. And keeping it simplified you have to keep it very distinct and very precise. So that is why we are talking about all this in relation to different features and different benefits that your brand offers. This positioning, this feature you're talking about. That positioning, you're talking about another feature. But then you've got to be mindful of the kind of repositioning I talked about in the previous lecture. When the customers are buying your car, and they keep on buying, you do not re really have to reposition it only because you think that position that you have been talking about has become kind of very old and you now should start talking about something else, not at the cost of the inner substance or not at the cost of that benefit which is responsible for tremendous sales. People must not start thinking all of a sudden that there has to be something which they've done with the safety factor and that is why they have not started talking about performance and we are not going to buy this car again. Our word of mouth becomes negative and new uh, prospects, they might think to themselves, uh, well, I always thought of buying this car because of the safety reasons and because of the safety factors which give uh, this model um, a lot of credibility and now I will think twice before I buy that. Uh, the last question which you should ask yourself toward this um, evaluation process is, does this positioning justify a price premium? Now, this question may not relate with uh, the brand XYZ you know, of uh, the sandwiches about which you're going to be started with the premise uh, that it is going to have a consumer friendly pricing. Uh, this does relate any other uh, product which you think is very highly differentiated and uh, which carries a lot of benefits uh, which competition is not offering and which really has the potential uh, to hit the, the pinnacle of uh, the brand value pyramid. In that case, uh, you do like to charge premium and uh, in that case, of course, the product has to have you know, those compatible features. So if the product has those features which are translated into uh, relevant benefits and um, then emotional uh, values on part of the customers, then that positioning is the one which justifies uh, premium uh, on the brand. If uh, there is no justification, uh, in other words, if there is no compatibility between the, what you are selling and uh, the pricing strategy, then there's got to be something wrong with positioning. The point to make is that uh, there should be no contradictions between uh, the way you are wanting to uh, position your brand and uh, the pricing strategy. And uh, as a matter of fact, all other strategies, whether we are talking in particular reference with uh, the price premium, uh, that is why the price is coming up again and again. But uh, the 
basic point is there should be no contradictions and I think after talking so much about uh, what positioning is and what are the guiding principles and what are the questions which you ask yourselves in order to come up with the right positioning and then what should be the process of evaluation so that you can cross check that the positioning which you are trying to choose from uh, so many different alternatives is just about the right position. Uh, things are clear in your mind what positioning is all about. Now, after carrying out this evaluation, you have chosen the brand positioning. With um, the positioning in place, you can now go for the rightmost positioning statement. And that is why I told you at that particular moment that you forget about the positioning statement which we uh, discussed and which I made uh, just for the sake of your understanding. If I had not started with that statement, maybe the process of uh, uh, instruction uh, to make uh, the concept easy uh, wouldn't have been that easy. It, 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 it could have been a little more difficult. That's why I said forget that statement for the time being. You can improve the statement and you can change it the way you like, uh, to make it uh, very precise and yet comprehensive enough to be able to lay the framework for uh, all the strategies that you require to implement your brand objectives. That is very important. So having said that, uh, let me state that once you have the positioning statement, uh, the next step is to coin the advertising message. And that's what you call the tagline or the brand line, um, advertising line. You may call it uh, anything. There's no hard and fast rule. But whatever brand line or uh, uh, the ad line, so to say, that you have is the outward expression of the positioning and of the brand's inner substance. You have to take charge of positioning meaning that once you have chosen the positioning statement and positioning for the brand, you must take charge of that. And what that means is, if you do not take, take charge, then competitors will. You should be quick on your feet in working on that and start working on that. Otherwise, competitors may acquire that position. There is nothing which is hidden. There is nothing which does not also come into the minds of others and that is what is meant by taking charge you know, of positioning otherwise competitors will. Positioning is the single most important activity uh, toward uh, strategic brand management and therefore uh, such a lot of emphasis has gone into positioning unless we have a very clear understanding of the concept of positioning that we cannot really go ahead with other concepts that are uh, around the corner for us to start discussing. And uh, with that, uh, I would say uh, positioning stands uh, completed and concluded. Uh, in the next lecture, uh, when I start talking with you, it is going to be about the brand extension. Um, what is brand extension and uh, why the concept came into being? We'll wait until I start talking about that. Uh, Allah Hafiz, until that time, and I look forward to seeing you.